Hello everyone, Turner Burner here with another video for you guys. I'm going to go over the Anchor class. Um, it's originally Max class. It's probably one of the strongest classes in the game right now, if not the strongest. And that includes Horde and Escape. Uh, but let's get right into it. Uh, I'm going to talk about... Um, I don't use this class for Horde. So if you have example stacks you want to give for Horde, just comment that down below. But I am going to talk about um, things I have observed from my teammates uh, who use this class for Horde as well. So let's get into it. So the Anchor class, uh, the Anchor is a pistol specialist that uses an invincible barrier to outsmart the enemy. Now, it says invincible barrier. Um, I think... The word unpenetrable will be better stated because I've gotten down by like <laughs> juvies trying to melee me through a barrier, but that's beside the point. That's semantics. Uh, you can't, in general, unless the salvo scion, you can't shoot the, the enemies can't shoot through the barrier and kill you. So that's, you know, obviously has value. And you get the barrier every two and a half minutes or so, so there's value there as well. So barrier deploy. The ultimate ability, deploy an invulnerable shield that moves with you. Um, passive ability, anyone who fires through your barrier deals 50% damage. I believe his passive before was the damage you take um, cooldowns your ultimate faster. I believe that was his passive before. Uh, but this passive is ex makes him extremely powerful combined with his other cards that got buffed. Because... When he does damage to his barrier, um, when he when he so if you have a teammate that's shooting next to uh, like a Foz who's already high DPS or another char other characters, they get that plus fifty percent damage. Um, so if a character does you know theoretically a thousand damage, it goes to fifteen hundred when shooting through um, max barrier. Um, this this also applies to Mac as well, which makes him extremely powerful. Some players have said he's overpowered, but I don't really talk that way. Um, but I can understand the logic on some small level. But let's get into it. So the capacity card is the same, uh, Boltog Bandolier. Um, I believe it's 37 or 38 shots you get when the game starts. Um, good card to have, um, especially on maps that don't have a ton of ammo. Uh, Dodge is a underrated card um, that I sometimes use on Ice Queen to help me not get frozen. 32% um, resistance to marksman weapons. That includes Sniper, Embar, um, and uh, Marksa. Bloody shot, uh, active bullets uh, cause bleeding for 80% of damage. Um, this is a substantial jump from 60%, um, which is outstanding for maps like, um, as an example, the Gauntlet. See, on the Gauntlet, it was common to wait for Venom that way uh, because Mac has, you know, Adrenaline Junkie. So it was common to wait for Venom. That way, to Matt can use Venom to strengthen his bloody shot because they stack together, kind of it basically triples the damage and allows him to get rid of the Bastion quicker. And um, that's a common strategy. But now, because it's bleed so high, you really don't have to do that. And I have a Gauntlet solo that I'll clip in the description, and I also have an Onslaught <clears throat> solo I'll clip in the description um, that are probably the one of my better utilizations. Um, of the anchor class um, in your face headshots taunt enemies for seven seconds um, I've seen this work really effectively um, it didn't always but it works effectively where um, if Mac gets a headshot I believe it also counts as headshot hit uh, yeah excuse me yeah dealing headshot damage um, so headshot hits will cause the enemies to go to max specifically while a melee character can get an easy kill like Lonnie or Cole or Meal. Um, so this is a useful card to, just, to help distract your teammates for Horde or Escape. Crazy Tough. Um, um, uh, max health is increased by 60%. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. I basically, for the most part, 
Um, always use his card, I would say. Um, you know, very good, very good idea on on especially for solo runs like that I do to uh, you know have better health. It allows you to uh, survive more situations. Um, like a juvie melee will still down you in two hits, but the difference when you have crazy tough on the first hit won't have you almost completely down. Um, you know, with only like 1% health remaining, it'll have you about like 50% health remaining. Um, that way, if you get hit by a bullet from a distance, it doesn't immediately down you or kill you. Uh, Berry Feedback is actually a card I really like for solo runs. And one of the uh, better utilizations of that card is actually in my Onslaught solo. When I was on the stairs before the safe room, I was able to have my, my barrier for, I think, two or two and a half minutes straight. And keep in mind, it adds an extra three seconds uh, per kill. So that just puts in perspective how many kills I was able to get because of, uh, you know, the increased damage, um, the act of, you know, bloody shot and also uh, junkie. Um, but you'll just have to uh, see that solo on your own. Bullet Chain is his new skill card. It is uh, extremely good. I've utilized this on Ice Queen, right? So... Bullet Chain, as an example, it says each headshot gives you 35% extra damage for 15 seconds. Lonnie has a similar, call, call, similar card called Blade Dancer. kind of works the exact same way, actually. Um, so what ends up happening is Mac and these, these, this damage card will stack with Adrenaline Junkie um, as well. So you're going to do a lot of damage. Um, in some cases, you can one-shot Scions. So what will happen is you, you'll get one headshot, and then the next headshot you'll do more damage, and, in, and it's up to 200%. So um, I've seen a buddy of mine, an active, you know, active long shot, one-shot headshot of Scion. Um, I know for one of my score runs, I was able to combine feedback with Bullet Chain, and I was able to headshot like 15 drones in a row, not even needing an active on my long shot. Very, very useful uh, due to the fact that um, you get more damage. So it helps you kill the larger enemies like Scions, Wardens more efficiently. So uh, mine's only level three because I haven't been using this class a ton. Um, but it's even at this uh, low quote unquote damage, it's still very, very good. Um, I'm not entirely sure what it's at level six. I want to. I'm gonna guess uh, 50%. So adrenaline junkie has been buffed from 60% to 80%. Mac does more damage while on venom, so it doesn't have to be thick venom. It just has to be you know just check your map or check your surroundings. It could be light venom, and he will do increased damage. So because of the increased damage of bloody shot adrenaline junkie, this allows feedback to be more useful because he is getting quick, uh, kills faster to extend the barrier. So this allows, um, you know, again, I referenced my Onslaught solo, this allows me to get kills very efficiently and very effectively. That way I can, you know, have the barrier for an extremely long time. Epic score boost speaks for itself. 35% increased team score and whore, 35% time bonus and escape. Harness Energy is another new card, and I'm going to talk about this card from the perspective of what I've observed in Horde, because that's when I've usually seen it, and a, and a few escape matches from um, buddies of mine. So I have noticed that you, uh, so it says each barrier hit gives you three stem to the entire team if under 100% health, right? So when my buddy had this card on, he was dealing with a uh, Maltra Scion, and he was hitting the Maltra Scion, and he wasn't getting down by the Maltra Scion. I don't know if he he was dodging him or why. I couldn't really see from the distance. But the point I want to say is I was like across the map getting stem. So there's no distance uh, requirement for this skill card. This just you just continue to get stem. I can see this uh, shield being useful on uh, the Warren if you are running Lethal Barrier, and I'll get into that later, Lethal Barrier, Barrier Feedback, and Harness Energy, you'll get stem, you'll get kills with your barrier, and uh, the barrier will, ex uh, will extend. So I can see that having you know pretty good value. 
uh, Venom Recharge. Uh, kills in Venom Recharge Barrier by 35, 35 seconds. You don't. I don't think you need to use this card necessarily in most uh, cases due to the fact that you're going to get your barrier so frequently anyway. Um, but, you know, if you use this, it can, you know, may reduce from like two and a half minutes at worst all the way down to maybe like a minute if you want to utilize this card. So it's really your call and it depends on your style of play. It's not a bad card necessarily, but I don't think it's, uh, I think there's, you know, other higher priority cards in my opinion. A uh, barrier battery, a uh, barrier duration increased by 60%. It's a decent card. You could stack it with barrier feedback to make sure your barrier is going for a long time. It's really merely up to you. Um, or you can use that instead of feedback if you think you don't necessarily get, you know, kills efficiently your barrier. And it's really just to, you know, defensive purposes. Lethal barrier is what I mentioned uh, in connection with harness energy and feedback that could be useful on the Warren. So Barrier does 130% increased damage. So this is good to uh, take out Juvies, Leeches, um, this, typically those pesky enemies. Um, it can stun drones, um, from what I've noticed. Uh, but you still got to be reasonably careful. Um, it can kill Scions if you uh, um, if you have your movement correctly if, and the, the Scions are missing you. Sometimes it can stun Scions, which I find interesting as well. Um, so it just, it just depends on... Uh, um, how you play. Um, I've seen it useful on the line where a buddy of mine was using Lethal Barrier to take out Scions. Um, for some reason, it was stunning the drop shot Scions, so I find that interesting. Venom Resistance, 32% uh, damage uh, reduction basically while you're in Venom. Um, this includes the Venom itself uh, and also bullets that hit you while you're in Venom. A barrier boost. I haven't used this card in a while, but it can be effective if you want to help your team get, you know, maybe executions and meat shields. 150% um, increase barrier size. Uh, heads up, uh, take no damage from friendly fire. Honestly, if you have teammates <laughs> that are shooting you in the back, you need better teammates or different <laughs> friends altogether. <laughs> but it's up to you if you want to utilize this card. I would never recommend this card. Um, that shouldn't really be a problem at, you know, really ever. So, uh, and honestly, I don't believe like for uh, for Cole's all the glory card. I'm pretty sure this card doesn't save you. I think you have to. It only saves you from the context of if a, if a teammate is deliberately shooting you. But Cole's explosions, as an example, come from the enemies. So I believe you still do da get damaged. Uh, you know, that, I mean, that's the only thing I could think it'd be useful for, and it doesn't even work. That's the only time uh, uh, that would really be a relevant card in my estimation. But if you just have teammates that are kind of just goofing around, you just you need, probably just need to kick them and reload the map, honestly. <laughs> but score boost speaks for itself. 18% increased team score in or and 18% time bonus in escape. So uh, the skill cards... Um, let's see what I have on right now. So for escape, what I want to go over is, uh, the cards I typically run, Adrenaline Junkie, Bloody Shot, Bulltalk Bandolier, Crazy Tough, and Bear Feedback. That is like, in general, my go-to stack for escape. The only difference is on Ice Queen, I will change Feedback for the Marksman card due to the fact that it'll protect me from getting uh, sniped in, like frozen in Venom. So the Venom Resistance and the Dodge uh, will stack together to protect me from getting frozen in Venom. That's like a little Ice Queen tip for you if that's like a problem with yours as this, uh, as this character. You would, take, you would take off Crazy Tough and Feedback and you'd put on Venom Resistance and um, the Marksman card. So, but this is the, the this stack probably for ninety percent of maps highly effective. More damage in Venom, uh, more damage, uh, or Bleeding Boltok has more damage has been buff. You have more ammo to deal work with, increased health, and because you're doing more damage in Venom and more damage with your Bleeding Boltok, getting kills in a barrier it has been easier than it's ever been. So you can ascend the barrier and be protected. Um, 
constantly as you're getting shots off. So as I said earlier in the video, if you have a horde stack, as opposed to me doing an example one based off of, you know, just common sense, if you will, if you have a horde stack you like to discuss and put in the comment section, um, I would highly appreciate that. I would appreciate if it was based off of master difficulty because that's kind of what this channel channel is based off of that type of gameplay so if you play master horde with this character i would like to hear your thoughts and opinions so uh, that's pretty much it for the anchor class if you have questions or you feel like i you know i missed something um comment below uh if you have questions on this class uh let me know and um thanks for watching the anchor class and stay tuned for the next uh class explanation video. You guys have a good one. Peace.